Hey everybody, I am John Barker and welcome to another episode of Here to Record Show and Tell. Now today I've made a bit of a mess on the table because we're going to take a look at how to uh, control an ATEM switcher. I've got an ATEM 1ME HD version in my uh, rack over there and um, I'm going to show how to control that via a MIDI uh, keyboard, a USB interface. In this uh, case I have a Korg Nano Control 2 but you should be able to use most uh, MIDI keyboards to do this thing. Um, I'm going to show you how it all works and how to set it all up. Uh, there's a couple of things you will need. Obviously, you'll need an ATEM switcher and you'll need some sort of MIDI keyboard. Um, that's the hardware side of things. In terms of software, um, over on the computer, you can see that we need something called ATEM OSC. Um, this is just a piece of software that this guy, uh, Daniel, has developed. It's really, really cool, really, really powerful. Um, a way of connecting not only an iPad, but also a MIDI pad to, um, to your ATEM. I'm gonna make a future video on how to control all of this via your iPhone or your iPad um, using Touch OSC. You'll find that video up on the top corner whenever that's ready. But for now, let's just talk about a MIDI uh, device. So you've downloaded and installed ATEM OSC, which is a Mac uh, client. And then you also wanna download something called Oscillator or OSC Later. Um, this basically takes the MIDI, uh, the MIDI inputs and sends them to ATEM OSC, which then sends them to your ATEM switcher. Um, you will need all these applications running in the background whenever you're using it, but they are just tiny little applications. They'll work just fine. Uh, another note is that ATEM OSC is free, but Oscillator, there's a free version which will let you try it out, um, but you will have to uh, purchase it at some point if you want to use it. And in this case, it's 176 Swedish kroner, which is about 22 euros I paid for it. So it's definitely worth the money if you find it useful for your setup. So that's the software. You've already got that installed. Um, let's head over and see how it looks. So here is the ATEM control software, but I'll just open up ATEM OSC. And this is what it looks like. Uh, it's a little small one window uh, application, um, basically. What you'll be able to do here is set the IP address of your switcher, and in this case, it's find mine, um, and then you can set an OSC IP address. I've just left this as the default. Um, seems to work for me. If it's not working for you, then uh, I'll let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can fix that for you. And then I just let these as the default as well. Um, that will just run in the background. There's not really much else you need to do, but what I will do is jump up to the help menu and go to OSC addresses and then that'll give me this little window. I'll just keep that down in the bottom corner because I will, um, oh, whoops, wrong window. I will definitely use that uh, a few times throughout the setup process. So I'll just leave that down there. Next up, let's open up OSC later or oscillator, I guess you would probably call it. Um, so that is opened up. And the first thing you can do is obviously you should have connected your uh, MIDI controller by now and then head up to the uh, little, cog here for the preferences and what I'm able to do is go into devices and just make sure that I've ticked my nano control for MIDI input and output so that's uh, that's working okay you can leave the rest of these settings as they are um, and I will just close out of that and now if I press one button on my actual keyboard I will press this one and what you'll see on the computer is that it has now showed up as a button Press. So if I press that a few times, you'll see that little yellow icon just uh, flashing there. That just tells you that's the button I'm pressing. So what happens now? You turn that button press into an OSC message and you send that OSC message to ATEM OSC. So in event type, I will say OSC message. In the value, I will set a new value because I haven't actually set up any values yet. And then in here, it's quite confusing this, this layout, but if you just follow these steps, you'll get it working okay. In this, you will now make a new one by double clicking on here. So we're writing a new address. So in this rewrite address, I will have a look at my OSC addresses. So that's what I have open over here. Um, and in this instance, what I want to do, that went away, what I want to do is make this button press, so that button right there, I want that to tick camera one to the preview. So I will do that by simply typing in, let me see if I can find it on the sources. There we go. So sources, so ATEM, 
and these are the program ones and you can do the same. All you have to do if you want to change the preview is change that word to preview instead of program. So I will say uh, forward slash ATEM forward slash preview and uh, I know that my uh, camera one in this case is rooted through input number two. So I'll set that as number two. Um, you'll just have to see what your own uh, routing setup is. In fact, I can pop into my ATEM control software into preferences and into mapping. And here I can see that input two is my uh, close up camera. So that's where you'll find that information if you didn't know already. Heading back over here again, ATEM preview two. And I'll okay that. Now, really quickly, I'm just going to show you the uh, multi view. And um, you can see here if I press, in fact, I should probably change to a different shot. So I'll just change to the wide camera. Um, so that's the wide camera is on preview right now. And if I press this button uh, right here on the uh, MIDI controller, then what should happen is that this will become uh, shot one will go to preview, which it did, which is great. So as you can see there, that worked. I haven't set up the other buttons, so I'll just do it manually. Um, I can just change once again over to a different shot. I'm just doing that in the background. So that's me change a different shot. Press the button again, it goes to preview. Really cool, really simple. It works really well. I'm really surprised that um, it just works so well. So let's continue. Um, and you, obviously you can do whatever buttons you want to be. For me, I've decided to go ahead and put the bottom row to be preview of each of the shots, the middle row to be program of each of the shots, and the top row to be macro of each of the shots. So I'm just gonna show you how to do one of each in this video, and then I'll jump to where I've already done all of those. So let's go for this middle one. The best way to just uh, see what button you're pressing is to jump into the software, and I will show you that. Just head into the software, press the button, and you can see which one comes up yellow. And also if you sort them by the activity, then whatever button you're pressing will come up to the top. So that's the best way to do it. So I'm pressing that button, it goes to the top. I press a different button, this one goes to the top. Discontinue, OSC message. And here the value, I wanna say new value. And in this case, I want it to be forward slash ATEM. This time I'm setting program and that's input two. I'll set, hit enter on that and I can see that that has uh, worked if I head to the, I'm just showing you the multi-view again. And now if I hit um, a different shot on air, there we go, and I press um, this button here, the program will change to that shot. Um, so it seems to be working okay. Now let's try out what it looks like to do a uh, macro. So now you're looking at the screen again and I will hit uh, the macro button, this button I wanna set to macro one, uh, the very top row. I'll hit that and I can see it popped up there. And for a macro, things look a little bit different. I'll set a new address. Um, for macro, let's just take a look at the OSC addresses. And you can see at the very bottom, there are macro options and you can do a bunch of other cool things with macros, stop them. And, uh, but in this case, I just wanna start them. So I will say, uh, yes, run the macro at in index something. So I will go for forward slash ATEM, forward slash macros, forward slash. And I know that the macro that I want is on index two, and I'll say forward slash run. And the way to find your index of your macros, there's an XML file that you've saved with your ATEM uh, configuration setup. And you'll see at the very bottom of that, there's a macro section and everything is, it says index of the macro and it'll tell you the number of that. And also you can just try to mess around with these numbers and see if you can find the one you want. But that's where you'll find that in the XML file that you'll save um, out of your production or ATEM control software, you'll save that file. So back to the computer, I can see ATEM macro to run. And I will hit enter and save that. And now I know that if I press that button, you will be able to see the macro kick in. So this macro is something I've set up just for breaks during uh, conferences. Basically what happens is it cuts to this shot and then it slowly fades this shot onto it. And you can see that now if I press the button, it'll cut to that shot and slowly fade that. So that is a macro. That's just one button press doing all that work. Um, and that works really nicely. I think it works really nicely. So I know that the opposite of that 
uh, is another macro I've set up. So let me just set that up really quickly and I can um, undo that work. And just as before, all you have to do is head over to uh, this, hit the button, set an OSC message, set a value, set an address, HM macros three run, hit enter. And then if I head back to this view and I press that button again, it turns off that macro and slowly fades out of that and sets up that shot and that shot. So you can just see, um, it doesn't really matter what my macros are doing, but you can see that if I press this button, it begins a macro, fades that shot on. I press this button, it begins another macro, fades that shot off. And if you've had a look at macros before in Blackmagic uh, ATEM software control, you'll know that you can set up all sorts of things. And then with a single button on your MIDI control, you can hit that and uh, it turns on macros and runs through them and all that cool stuff. Um, next up, I think we should do some transitions. So cut, auto, and also the T-bar, which is really cool you can do. Um, in my particular setup, I'm going to set uh, this button over here as my cut at the bottom this button as my auto, and then I'm gonna use this slider as my T-bar. And um, just like before, it's really simple to do. Um, I just have to set over to my screen and hit the what I want to be the cut button, which will be that one. OSC message, new, new message, forward slash, 810, forward slash, and I'll just go up to the top of the OSC addresses. And here you can see um, yeah, transitions, I want this one to be cut. ATEM, transitions, cut. So transition, oh sorry, transition, forward slash cut. And now, that button will be the cut button, but let me just go ahead and set up these other buttons too. So I press the next button that I want to be the auto button, which will be this one, message, ATEM, oh forward slash ATEM, forward slash transition, forward slash, let's just see here, auto. Auto, that'll be that. And then finally, I'm just gonna set up this this T, or this or uh, slider to be my T-bar. So I'm moving the slider and I can see that came to the top over here. OSC message, new, open that, forward slash ATEM, and then uh, T-bar is ATEM transition, forward slash bar. Transition, forward slash, bar. Enter that. Okay, now those are my three cuts uh, or transition type set up. And obviously you can set up whatever one you want um, in whatever button you want. That's the beauty of this system. But I just wanted to set those up. So now if I hit the cut button, you can see that I am cutting between uh, program and preview. If I hit the auto button, which I've set up to be the, um, the little M here on the last row, that should nicely uh, do an auto transition between the two, which it does. And it just uses whatever rate you have set within your software control. And that works great. Um, cut still works nicely. And then if I grab this little slider, this is what's cool, I think. If I grab this little slider, um, it actually takes over the, uh, the T-bar and starts to move the T-bar. And there you can see I can undo what I did. I can continue and it works really nicely. Um, and if I just show you inside of the uh, ATEM control software. Um, in the background here, you can see that it grabs that T-bar and it just slides it up. This is not a touch screen. This is just this uh, MIDI slider moving that around, which is really nice. You can get some really fine controls and you can push through a shot. If you were doing some sort of like music uh, show and you want the uh, faded image in the background, you can do that and then pull back out again. And uh, now you go back into cut again, and you can see me cutting through the shots. Auto button, it all works really well. It all works really nicely. So that's uh, a quick look at um, ATEM OSC working with uh, Osculator or Osculator or whatever you call it, um, and all talking to an ATEM over the network. So obviously you'll need your ATEM plugged in to the computer. You'll need those two pieces of software running at all times, but I haven't had any problems with them. They've been just running in the background. Once you do all the setup, it all works great. Um, I'll just head over to open uh, my file, which is my full, or at least I think it's my full um, setup here. So if I don't save that, I shut that down. 
I can play this. So this is this is my file that pretty much does all the switching for me. And I can just flick through all the shots here and you can see that it's taking all of these on the preview. Um, the next row up is taking them all onto program. And then finally, I have a macros row. I hit my macro and it runs that macro. You can see there with the orange line. Press the next macro button and it all works really well. Just It just works. It'll stay in the background. I can take my T-bar up and down. You see me grabbing that. I can jump into cut. Uh, you can't see that because I haven't set it up. There we go. Now it's cutting between them. It's going to do a fade and all those buttons are working really nicely. Now I've just scratched the surface with uh, what you can do with the OSC, ATEM OSC. In that uh, addresses, you can see all the other options, transition types, upstream keyers, downstream keyers. You can set all the sources that you want. Um, funny enough, actually, it tells you, based on your ATEM control setup, it tells you what numbers you need to set. So obviously, I have my GoPro source and I have my screens source. I've custom written these names within my ATEM switcher and then ATEM OSC has pulled those actual names in here, which is a really nice way to glance and see what uh, each source is called. Um, you can set your auxiliaries, you can set aux outputs on any of these buttons if you want. And um, you can also set up media players and all that cool stuff. Um, but I've just sort of scratched the surface on what you can do with uh, ATEM OSC, Oscillator, and your ATEM software control. Hope you find that useful. If you do have any questions or there's anything that wasn't quite clear, please let me know. I can try and help you out. It's all um, quite straightforward. It just takes some time to work your way through it all. And the link below will take you to the blog post and that'll show you all the stuff you need to download and all the stuff you might need to buy. Um, and it's up to you. If that stuff works for you, then you should go for it and pay for Oscillator. Um, contribute on the GitHub for ATEM OSC. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next episode of Show and Tell. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. I'm just gonna have some fun with this now.